Once again, I must apologize for the long delay between Blade Guides, Smash, being sick, and just in general not feeling the greatest are to blame. But I am finally back and determined to finish up this series as soon as possible. Today we have Veil, probably not a blade you think about the most, but a decent attacker blade nonetheless. She is at the top of C tier and can do a pretty large amount of damage when her conditionals are met, and she also has a cool goth design. Truth be told, Veil is an interesting blade, where it seems like she was purposely designed to be one of the better blades in the game, but in practice it doesn't end up working out that way. She's similar to Shiba in that aspect, and in this video we're going to take a look at why that is, as well as discuss all of her strengths and weaknesses, and how to use her most effectively. If you enjoy these guides and all of my content, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So Veil is a Megalant class weapon, now the third we have discussed. Megalantes are a decent attacker class with an above average auto attack stat of 1468 and the second highest critical hit rate tier, maxing out at 50% with the Moon Matter Core Chip. They also have a pitiful block rate that doesn't really matter. Her defenses are 5% physical and 10% ether, meaning she's not going to be the tankiest blade if she grabs aggro. Her cooldown is 5, so among the best in the game if you want to swap to Veil often, but this probably isn't the best idea, knowing how she works. Her stat mod is 15% ether since her specials are more ether based than physical based like other Mega Lances, and synergizes decently well with her. But as usual, the main thing that matters is the skill tree, so let's take a look at what Veil has to offer there. Veil's first skill is Overture of Blood. This will increase damage to launch enemies by 50% at level 1 and 150% at level 5. Increased damage to launch enemies is not that useful of a skill overall. Launch only lasts for 5 seconds normally and a bit over 7 seconds with a maximum extension, and it's an animation-based stage of the driver combo, so even trying to freeze it or take advantage of making it slower in chain attacks won't have much effect. This means this skill isn't all that useful since there's just such a brief window to get the damage bonus. One good thing Veil vale does have going for her is the smash art on Morag, so you can at least get some big damage out of that with this skill, but overall it's not very impressive. Definitely her worst skill. Veil's vale second skill is Void Lance. This will increase damage dealt from the side by 20% at level 1, rising up to 100% at level 5. This skill is pretty decent, you can get a big damage boost just attacking from the side of an enemy. It's not too difficult to position yourself here, however there is a weakness. If Veil vale takes aggro, she's going to have a hard time taking advantage of this skill simply because the enemy will constantly be tr moving to try to face her. That can make it difficult to always take advantage of this skill and relies on not having aggro to take advantage of it most effectively. But if you're doing more damage, you'll more easily gain aggro, which creates a dilemma. Regardless though, team her up with other powerful blades and you can mitigate that issue. Veil's vale's final skill is Violence Machine. This will increase your damage by 25% every time a special is used, rising up to 50% increase at level 5, and capping out at 300% at all levels. On the surface, a 300% added damage increase is very high for a single skill. And yes, she can do a lot of damage if you're able to set this up, but just like her other skills, it has some major flaws to it. Firstly, it resets when you swap Veil vale out for another blade. This is one of the worst possible skills that could do this because oftentimes you'd want to be swapping blades to access different specials, and if you're using that type of strategy, and even if you plan to stay on Veil, vale, it takes time to use 6 specials even with the fastest setup to do that. Having a skill that stacks both fairly slowly because of the requirement of using specials along with it resetting on swap makes it much less useful than you'd think, and all around her 3 skills, despite all being powerful damage increases, end up being pretty conditional and hard to take advantage of, and that makes Veil vale less useful than you might want. But if she relies on using specials, maybe her specials are pretty good, so let's take a look at those now. Veil's vale's level 1 special is Blood Altar. It is a 3 hit special with a pretty average speed and a really bad damage ratio of 270 at level 1, 390 at level 5, and 432 at max affinity. That's among the lowest in the entire game and does not synergize well at all with her wanting to use a lot of specials doesn't really have anything else notable about it either. No AoE, no critical modifier, and even its bonus effect is another difficult conditional to take advantage of, being doing more damage when under 30% health, which is not always the best situation to be in. Considering the fastest way to build up Veil's passive is spanning level 1 over and over, this is a pretty pitiful special and not what you'd want to see at all. Veil's level 2 special is Tainted Palace. This special is also not really that great overall, having another low damage ratio of 360 at level 1, 520 at level 5, and 580 at max affinity, and the speed is once again pretty average or below average. This special at the very least has a small area of effect radius, but the bonus effect once again is pretty terrible. It has a 5% chance to fell a beast enemy on attack. 
It's only two hits, only two chances per use, and only on one very specific type of enemy with a very low chance in general. This is essentially a useless bonus effect, and again, just another poor special that doesn't seem to be that useful. Veil's level 3 special is Accursed Prison. The good news is that this special is better than a level 1 and 2 at least, and has an at least an average damage ratio of 450 at level 1, 690 at level 5, and 748 at max affinity. It even has a 25% critical hit modifier, which can be nice for increasing the critical hit rate. The bad news is it's pretty slow overall, and still only 3 hits. The bonus effect is a nulling guard, which is okay, but not that spectacular, and the radius is at least decent on this special for killing multiple enemies. Overall, though, Fail's first three specials leave a lot to be desired for a blade that wants to use a lot of specials, and I really wish they were better. Her low hit counts and bad speeds don't make her a particularly great option for chain attacks either, which is also unfortunate because I believe that will increase her passive damage. Veil's level 4 special is Dark Drama. This special has a damage ratio of 1075, actually being pretty good, and it also has a huge 60% critical hit modifier, probably making it her best option for damage. The bonus effect is another that increases damage when under 30% health, so not the most useful, but it can be good if you're at that health range and want to take advantage of it for the larger damage boost. Level 4s come with the added benefit of fusion combo setups on driver combos by freezing them, and invincibility that can always be useful, and it can be used to get Veil's side attack additive in this case, so that's extra useful at the very least. It doesn't really do much of note outside of this, but it is an option if you're trying to do as much damage with the special as possible. Unfortunately, being a level 4, it's not a great special for stacking up Veil's passive, so do keep that in mind. For setup, Moon Matter is probably the only real choice. The bonus effect with Tachyon isn't really that great, and the extra crit rate is just too valuable. No other chip offers that much to you either, so just stick with this. Veil has three aux core slots because she was intended to be good, so that means you can try to load her up with some good stuff there. The standard stuff, of course, is Affinity Max Attack, or Outdoor Indoor Attack, and Night Vision for accuracy against annoying agile foes, but otherwise something like Critical Up or another damage booster. Everything else is usually pretty situational, but can be useful like Affinity Max Barrier. For accessories, I am running the Crimson Headman because it's an extremely useful damage multiplier given how Veil has a huge critical hit rate but no critical damage buffs yet, and I am also running Divine Van Brace as another safe boost to damage since Veil has lower survivability and won't benefit from something like a Noise Dampener too since she doesn't really about using arts all that much. The final accessory is the standard safe option of crit healing with Avant Guard Metal to help give me more survivability if she grabs aggro. I think it's additionally beneficial on her because of her playstyle and works well in long drawn out fights. Other options can be Burst Symbol for chain attack setups, Lance Attachment if you think you'll stack up the additive well, Dauntless Boots if you like agility, Omega Drive if you like party meter, and pretty much all the other standard things. Her pouch items have a mix of art and special recharge for Veil. The Snow Pouch is a favorite category of Veil, so she can get a boost from that to her special recharge and damage. She also likes dessert, so art recharge dessert is beneficial to her also. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Veil practically. First things first, let's fight Tyranotite for real. He feels like a decent um, character to get a um, basis against, of course. So Veil, not really about the art damage in general. She's more about stacking up the special damage pass if you want to really take advantage of and use her. She does have a good smash art on Lamorag that you can use to take advantage of on um, the extra launch damage to get like guaranteed damage cap smashes and stuff like that. So that is one benefit. What I like to do is just try to use level 1 as much as possible, like really early on those, just so I can get the damage stacked up. It doesn't really matter against an enemy that's not really that defensively sound, like Tyranitite and Kuridol here. But basically I'm just stacking up my special for now, and what I'm going to end up doing is um, using Tora's, since I have Cutie Pie set to dark right now, I'm going to end up using him to help a little bit with um, the, the dark combo here, now that I've stacked up my level 1 a bit. You just saw the really easy damage cap smash there. I'm going to use Black Abyss here, and then I'm going to use Hyper Graviton and finish it off with just a chain attack. I've got a decent amount of damage at this point. I'm standing to the side of him currently, I believe. I don't know if this counts as the side or the back. It looks like the side to me, but, you know, sometimes that can be difficult to tell on certain enemies, but I'm trying to stand to the side the best I can here and have Tor keep aggro as best I can. The chain attack here is really unnecessary, but I'm just going to do it anyway just to um, show the chain attack damage. There is a little bit of fusion combo left, but it expires just before my attacks hit, so they don't end up doing that much damage there. Um, about 900k with uh, crits there, which is just a testament to all the damage I've stacked up and me being to the side of the enemy. Even without a fusion combo, I can get a decent amount of damage there, which is pretty nice. It's only three hits, so the damage ratio wasn't, like, scattered that much, but at the very least, we're able to get some decent damage off of that. 
So Tyranitite and Kuridel goes down pretty easily. Veil can do a lot of damage. Even without fusion combos, you can hit damage caps and chain attacks. So the second thing I want to show off here is um, against Immovable Air Carlos, the reinventing the Gogol challenge on normal. So one cool thing about this challenge is that between phases, it doesn't count as a reset. So you can actually stack up your damage additive on the first few phases of the fight. And that allows you to um, just build up your special passive that much easier. And then you can actually keep it going into the final fight against the really powerful enemy at the end here. It also helps these enemies are beasts, so maybe you can actually take advantage of that 5% chance to fell them with Veil's level 2 special, maybe. But, well, not Carlos, he's immune. So I'm going to stand to the side, I don't know how effective this is going to be. And another really cool thing about Carlos is when he enrages, he enrages the light element, and you can do a massively increased damage to him with dark element because of his special property of his enrage. But in general, the strategy here is just keep myself healthy with the uh, Avant Guard Metal and um, just uh, use specials and abilities as I have the ability to. Overall, though, I'm not right, really that worried about him. I'm going to be able to do a decent chunk of damage to him with every art here, like in the, the six digits, obviously, pretty easily. So that's pretty nice. I haven't used a special yet. I'm busy um, saving up for a level four just to... Um, stop stuff like this from happening with Feral Beat. I end up using a level 3 anyway, though, because I just didn't want to have the Feral Beat stop me from doing things for a while and cut my healing. Just in case, I might end up getting comboed and killed after the Feral Beat. Not a big deal, though. We're able to get back to full health. Every time he hits us, we're able to get back up to full health thanks to the Avant Guard Medal, which is a very useful accessory in this case. Tora is going to be using the level 2 Black Abyss here, which is um, going to be able to get our level 3 set up now. And this is going to set up an orb on him. I'm going to keep this orb on him for later. And one thing I'm going to do, do really soon when he gets to a certain health threshold is um, just save my level 4 and stop attacking him entirely because I don't want to deal with the um, Wild Wave, that really dangerous one-shot attack he has once he enrages. That can just absolutely destroy you. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing. Since my special passive is already stacked up, I don't really like to worry about much. Since he has aggro about on me, I'm not really worried about getting the side attack additive currently. I'll need Tora to take aggro if I'm going to do something about that. And Tora is also Dark Element here, just for the uh, combo potential and everything, like I already said. And besides that, we're just relying on um, driver combos here for the most part. Dagas, unfortunately, does not have Night Vision. I forgot to give it to him, so he's missing a lot of topples. That's one of the reasons this isn't going as smoothly as I would have liked. And I'm just waiting for him mostly to enrage at this point, so I can um, just move on with the fight and block the Wild Wave. And that's kind of why I'd slow down at this point, so that's... Uh, just some bad preparation by me, but you're going to be seeing Vale do some massive damage once he enrages, just um, absolutely annihilating him at that point. And once again, crit healing, especially with a 50% critical hit rate boosted by the um, max affinity bonus of 1.3, getting it up to like 65%, just allows me to keep myself healthy pretty much no matter what. So that's really nice. He doesn't really have any one-shot attacks outside of uh, Wild Wave, so we don't really have to worry about anything else here. And we'll be able to keep ourselves healthy, no issues at all. Carlos does have really annoying agility. Make sure you run the Night Vision if you're planning on fighting him. That's uh, the reason this fight's annoying right now, because I keep missing attacks, which is really annoying. <laughs> so he finally enrages here. Uses the Wild Wave. He's level 4 to block it. This is also going to set up the uh, level 2 combo again here. And you can just see, I'm doing a huge amount of damage to level 4. Easy damage cap with no fusion combo, along with the uh, hits themselves doing a ton of damage. And now my arts are just doing a massive amount of damage to him, and his health is going down significantly faster than it was before. My auto attack there just did like over 100,000, which is absolutely insane. That smash there, the initial art hit almost did damage cap, the smash itself did damage cap, so... Yeah, he's, he's going down really quickly now, and uh, we'll be able to finish him off very, very easily. Along with keeping ourselves healthy, because every critical hit is basically a full heal at this point. I use my level 4 because it's the most powerful special at this point, so I'm just going to do a bit more blade combo damage to him. This doesn't actually give another orb. We only had one orb to begin with. It was the dark orb. But now we're in a position where I can just chain attack and kill him, I think. Between Veil and Cutie Pie, we have plenty of damage to finish off the rest of his health bar with just a two-round chain attack, so I'm not really worried at all. So yeah, that's um, kind of just how to use Veil, and she's actually better in challenge mode, I think, because you can stack her um, passive and wave before a dangerous fight, so you don't have to worry about the slow stacking nature of it. So that is one benefit of her, and something that she can take advantage of. 
If Veil's additives were easier to hit, if she had better chain attack damage overall, she could probably be a much better blade because she, do she does have some decent damage and she has a lot of things that are good going for her, but it just ends up not being all that practically useful in a lot of situations and that just means she's not as good as the developers might have wanted her to be. But she's still a decent blade overall. Top of C tier is by no means bad and you can absolutely make her work in a number of situations. That's going to about cover it for this guide, so I hope you guys managed to learn something from watching this and enjoyed the video as always. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below, and tell me how you like to use Veil. I don't have much more else to say, so look forward to future Blade Guides in the future, and as always, have a wonderful day, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.